Every now and then, a new tool comes along that makes me ask the question, how did we go so long without something like this existing? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you such an application. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV, your home for Linux-related fun and learning. In today's video, it's all about DistroBox. DistroBox is awesome. I've had a chance to check it out recently, and I figured I'd create this video to show you guys how to use it. What I'll do in this video is give you the basics of DistroBox, and I'll show you how it works. In fact, with DistroBox, you could do some very strange things. For example, here I have an application that is running on my system, and it doesn't look like anything unusual, does it? Well, what I'm running right here is Firefox. But not just any Firefox, I'm running the Fedora version of Firefox. But my host distribution is Pop! OS, so how exactly did I do that? Well, the answer, as you could probably guess, is DistroBox. DistroBox is crazy. It's like a Swiss army knife of distributions, and it lets you cobble together some very weird things. For example, if you want to run Arch user repository packages on Debian, you can absolutely do that. And the applications will run just as well or almost just as well as they do on the actual distribution itself. Now it's not foolproof, but DistroBox does let you do some really cool things, so I can't wait to show it off. And here's another example. Here's my Arch Linux installation, and I have Google Chrome open on my screen as you can see, but what I'm running is the Debian version of Google Chrome. Whatever you want to do that's crazy, strange, or just unusual, you could probably do it with DistroBox. Now one thing I want to mention real quick is that DistroBox doesn't technically let us do anything that we weren't able to do before. Containers have existed for a very long time and we've been able to use them to run all kinds of applications that weren't meant for the host platform, so that in and of itself isn't really new. The difference is how DistroBox makes this very, very easy. In the past, exposing a GUI application to your host system was not the most straightforward thing to do. Yes, we've done it, lots of us have done it, and home lab people do this all the time, but DistroBox makes this very easy. So easy, in fact, that it's kind of shocking. So basically, DistroBox is a simple tool, simpler than you might expect. It gives you the ability to install things from multiple distributions on one single host system. It does this by utilizing technology that we've had for quite some time. And yes, you guessed it, containers. DistroBox makes the process of running applications on various distributions so easy that it changes the mindset from, do I have enough time to figure out how to do this, to, I have a few minutes to kill, why not try it and see what happens? And that's part of the charm of DistroBox and one of the reasons why I love it so much. It doesn't mandate how you use it, it presents itself as a tool for you to use and you decide how you use it. If you want to set up a crazy experiment, well, just go ahead. If you have a few minutes to kill and you want to run a package from one distribution on another, DistroBox is a great way to do that. But you might be wondering why you would want to do this in the first place. Well, there's a lot of different reasons why you might need a solution like DistroBox, but it's not for everyone. If you're a developer, and especially if you're a developer that packages software for multiple distributions, you're really going to love this because this is a great way to have an environment where you can build a package without having to reinstall your entire distribution. If you want to try out a package before you install it on your host distribution, you could use it for that. Or if you just want to see how a package differs in one distribution versus, you know, what's offered in another, it's a good fit for that as well. In fact, although it's beyond the scope of this video, some people are using DistroBox to run desktop environments, complete desktop environments. So if you wanted to try out the latest version of Plasma, you could probably do that within DistroBox. Now again, it's beyond the scope of this video, but it is something that you can do and people are doing it. So in this video, what we're going to do is work through the process of using DistroBox, and you're going to see how easy it actually is to use. It's not challenging at all. In fact, just a few commands and you have it installed. But I'll show you how to install it. I'll give you some examples of how to use it. It's going to be a ton of fun. Now with all of that out of the way, it's time to dive into DistroBox, so let's do exactly that. I'll have time codes in the description down below, as I always do, so you can get right to the section that most interests you. So without any further hesitation, let's check out DistroBox. So let's get started. What you're seeing on the screen right now is a PPA repository for DistroBox. 
This is only needed if you're running a version of Ubuntu that's a bit older than a more current release. I'm running Pop! OS, which is based on Ubuntu 2204, and on that distro, well, it's not available in the repository, so I just wanted to mention this page right here in case you are also running on a similar system. On most distributions, you shouldn't need a repository, but on this one, I do. So if you're running on Ubuntu 2204 or anything based on it, or perhaps an older version of Ubuntu than that, you will need this repository. So I'll go ahead and copy this right here, and I'll have a link to this down in the description down below. We'll just go up here to the terminal, we'll paste it in, press enter. And now we have that repository installed. We'll need Podman installed in order for us to be able to use this particular application. So what we could do is run sudo apt install, and then the package we'll install is Podman. Podman is a requirement for DistroBox. It needs a containerization solution. You could also use Docker, but Podman is recommended because it's able to run rootless containers. It's just better for security. And we're done. Now that we have Podman installed, we can go ahead and install DistroBox itself. Thankfully, that's really easy to do. All we have to do is run sudo apt install, and then, you guessed it, DistroBox. I'll press enter. And it's a very small utility. In fact, it's already done. That's all it took to install DistroBox. It was super quick. But now that we have DistroBox installed, how do we go about using it? Well, let's run through the first of the DistroBox commands I'll be giving you right now. What I'm going to do is run DistroBox, and then I'll give it the keyword create. I'll press enter. Notice that it's going to be installing Fedora even though I didn't tell it to. I'll tell you why that's the case here shortly, but for now I'll press enter to accept the default of yes. It's going to download the Fedora image, and that Fedora image is what's going to power the container that I'm about to create. And the process is complete. What we've done, even though we only typed distrobox create, we created a Fedora container and it's available for use. It even chose a name for us. It's called My Distrobox. In fact, it gives us the command to enter that particular container to get a command prompt from the container, which we can do by typing distrobox enter and then the name of the particular instance you've set up. Now, before we do that, there's an alternate command I want to give you. If you recall, I had you run distrobox create. Another thing you could do is add the NVIDIA option, dash dash NVIDIA, and that's for those of you that have an NVIDIA GPU, and for some reason you'd like to expose that GPU to the container. I'll leave that up to you, but I definitely wanted to make sure you had this command for your notes because you might need it. Anyway, since the output tells us that we could run distrobox enter and then my distrobox, let's just go ahead and do exactly that. Now, what exactly happened? Well, let's run the following command and see if we can investigate this a little bit. Let's check out the OS release file. But wait a minute. It's showing Fedora, but I'm using Pop! OS. If I run that same command on my host system here, well, you can see I'm running Pop! OS. So when I used the enter command with distrobox, I was able to enter the Fedora container, and now all the commands that I enter in this terminal are going to be executed against a Fedora system. Okay, so there's a few things that we can glean from this situation so far. DistroBox is very easy to install. You only need the PPA if you have an older distribution, but for most of you, it should be available in your distribution's package repositories. So go ahead and install the DistroBox package, and you should be good to go. We also learned that we need a container engine in order for this to work. We installed Podman earlier in this video, and that satisfied that request. That's the recommended method, so that's what you should install as well. The main benefit with Podman is that we have additional security. Now, just because we have a solution like DistroBox and we're running apps inside of it, or at least we will be, that doesn't mean that the apps are going to be more secure of and by themselves. But Podman does have additional security. For example, it lets you run rootless containers. That's a good benefit to have, which is one of the reasons why it's recommended. Now, a couple of other things that we've noticed is that if we don't tell the distrobox command which distribution we want the container to be based on, we're going to get a Fedora container by default. 
We also know that if we don't give it a name, it's going to give it a name for us. And that brings us to the first thing that I really love about DistroBox. It's super easy to use. Now another thing we could do is check out which Linux kernel the container is running. Which one do you think it is? Well, I'll press enter and let's find out. Now, if you already know Linux well enough, you probably know that that was a trick question. The kernel that we're going to be running inside the container is going to be the same as the host system, so we're not running a Fedora kernel here. We're still running the kernel that came with my distribution, but we are able to run commands against a Fedora system by using DistroBox. In fact, let's check out another example, and this one's going to be a lot of fun. What I'm going to do is run sudo dnf install and then genie. Let's install the genie text editor. But we're inside the container here, so what's going to happen exactly? Well, let's find out. We'll install the package. Sorry to interrupt myself, but I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. I'll type Y and press enter to confirm. And now we have Genie installed here inside the Fedora container. So let's run it. I'll just type Genie just like that and I'll press enter. Wait a minute, it's showing up here inside my desktop environment. This is Genie. It's actually Genie. Now it's not the Ubuntu version or the Pop! OS version in my case. This is the Fedora version running here on Pop! OS 2204. And here we can see some information about the version. So already I was able to run Genie from within a container, the Fedora container, and I was able to run that to make it look like a native application here on my host system. Now let's take this a step further. I'll just close out of everything here. I'll exit out of the container. And as you can see, I'm back on Pop! OS. Now the next thing I'll show you is how to name your container. So what I'll do is type distrobox and then create just like we did last time. But I'm going to give it the dash n option because I want to give it a custom name. I want to name the container. I don't want it named for me. I want to give it a name of my own choosing. If we don't ask for anything else, we're going to get a Fedora container by default. I'll show you how to specify the distribution later, but let's just give it a name and I'll call mine Fedora Box. So I'll press enter and let's see what happens. And just like before, I can run DistroBox and then enter and then the name of the container, I called it Fedora Box and I'll press enter. So far so good. So let's take a look at this and make sure we are running in the appropriate environment. And we are. I'll go ahead and exit and return back to my host system here and show you the next example. At this point, we have a couple of containers, so how do we keep track of all of these? Well, the next example is going to show you exactly how to do that. And just like everything else so far, it's really easy. All we have to do is run distrobox and then list, and that gives us a list of the containers that we have installed here on the system. So, well, that's pretty easy to do. Now for the next example, what I'm going to show you how to do is select a different distribution to act as the base for your container. Just like before, what we'll do is run distrobox and then create. We want to create a distrobox essentially. Dash n because we want to give it a name. And what I'll do is call this one Ubuntu box. So you could probably guess that I'm going to be creating an Ubuntu container. And to do that, I'll give the distrobox command the dash dash image option. This allows us to select a different image. And specifically, what I'll do is select the Ubuntu 2204 image. So Ubuntu at version 2204, just like that. And let's see what happens. So I don't have the Ubuntu image here on my system, so I'll let it download it. I just pressed enter to accept the default of Y for yes. It's pulling it down right now. And now, just like before, we can run distrobox, enter, and then the name of the box, which is going to be, in my case, Ubuntu box. That's the one that I just created. So I'll press enter. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to start the container, and then it's going to install some basic packages. 
So now we are inside Ubuntu box, and what I'm going to do is install Genie again. I'm not sure why I'm picking on Genie all the time, but I'll just go along with it. Let's install Genie, the Ubuntu version this time. I'll press enter. And now that's done. To make sure the application works, let's launch it. I'll open Genie, and let's see what happens. And there it is. Here we have Genie running, just like last time, but the difference is that this is the Ubuntu package that's running here on my system. So, it's pretty cool that we can install packages from different distributions. In this case, we installed two different versions of Genie. Now, everything that you've seen so far isn't really all that exciting because everything that we've done, we could do within Docker or some other container manager. But the thing is, I'm not done yet. I'm going to show you something right now that's going to make this even more awesome. Now here inside the container, and this is important, we want to be inside the container, we have a very special command at our disposal. We have the distrobox export command. I'll type dash dash app, and then I'll type genie, the name of the application that I want to export. And what this command will do is let us export a package, so that way it's available to the host operating system as an application that can be launched through the app launcher. So let's run this and see what happens. It says that it's been successfully exported. And it tells me that this particular application will appear in my app launcher in just a few seconds. Let's check right now and see if it's there. Now you'll notice I have two versions of Genie right here. I already had Genie installed on my host system. It's something that I install on all of my systems. But I also have another shortcut that goes to Genie as well. And I apologize for my theme, it makes the text hard to see, but you'll notice that the top one here shows that it's being run on Ubuntu Box. The one underneath that is actually a Flatpak version of Genie. But the point here is that it's super easy to export an application that's running inside a container and have that be exposed to your app launcher. And there's our video. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I also hope you enjoy DistroBox. Let me know in the comments down below what you're using it for. I can't wait to see what you guys are putting together. Also, be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux. I would really appreciate that. And also consider supporting Learn Linux TV by becoming a patron or a channel member. It's not required, but it's always appreciated. Anyway, thank you so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next video.